Jazzcast Pros. I'm talking about setting goals and setting some difficult goals that may not be pleasant, but reaching them regardless. Like I set out to ride this 20 miles. I knew it was something I could do. I had a goal. It was just to finish the race, to finish the ride. Now, I'm riding this ride by myself. I don't have a team. I'm really doing this on my own. To leave out and to come back out in the middle of absolutely nowhere, it was a truly a challenge. And so I'm sharing this Grand Fondo experience with you. You know, there were three times that I really wanted to quit. I was just done. And you can decide to either throw in the towel or keep pushing. If you're not out here, you know, trying to keep up with the Joneses. This is about you doing what's best for you. Welcome to Living the Front Seat Life. I'm your host, Kelly Marie, and I invite you to take this journey with me. We're going to be talking about all things mental health and emotional well-being. You see, I am a overcomer. If you are interested in figuring out the path for you to determine how and where you will drive your future, this is the place to be. We get to determine the ride. We may not get to determine the weather or who's on the road with us or if it's going to be a scenic route or not, but we are the drivers. So join me on this ride, living the front seat life. Hello and welcome to Living the Front Seat Life. It's me, Kelly Marie, and I want to say konnichiwa to all of our listeners in Japan. We just got our analytics in, and great news, we have a large percentage of our listeners coming from Japan. So thank you all for listening. Thank you all for subscribing, for liking, and for sharing this podcast. So living the front seat life is all about being aware, open, and um, completely in control of the decisions that you make that drive your life, right? We, we may not be able to pick the weather, right? but we can decide what we're going to wear. We can decide how we're going to drive. We can decide what our experience will be like or how we perceive our experience, regardless of what's happening around us. And so I wanted to share with you guys today this crazy adventure that I went on and uh, what I learned from it. So I rode my first bike ride, like official bike ride, like, you know, there's 5k runs and, you know, half marathon runs. Well, they have bike rides too. So I went on my first ride and it was the Chautauqua Grand Fondo. I don't know what a Fondo is, and maybe I should look that up. But the Chautauqua Grand Fondo was my first ride, my first organized bike ride. Now, when you sign up, you can do 20, 40, or 60 miles. I have, you know, have no problem riding 40 miles. It's not something I've done often. I have done it a couple times, but 20 miles was really more in my, you know, wheelhouse, so to speak. And so that's what I signed up for. But remember back when I told you about my trip to um, Mexico, which, okay, granted, that was just a couple weeks ago. But a large part of me going on that international trip was because there were things back here at home that I wanted to do that I just couldn't do. I can't even say it was I was fearful, but in some ways it was fear, but other ways it was just my brain's inability to give me permission to do some things. And so going on that international trip kind of opened up the door for me to be able to do more here because I was able to do that. Like if I'm able to travel to another country by myself, I'm able to do a lot more things here at home. I don't know why my brain works that way. It just is what it is, guys. So I run with it. That actually, side note, is another great um, example of front seat life living is understanding how you work, how you best operate. And instead of fighting yourself, going with the flow with you, being kind to you and giving you what you need in order to make better choices or the choices that you want in order to live your life. So for me, I needed to go on this international trip so that I could make different choices here at home about 
how I decide to live my life. Again, you guys, I do not know why that was necessary, but it is what it is. So the Chautauqua Grand Fondo, um, the, the ride itself um, is a, a ride around Lake Chautauqua. The 20 mile ride is halfway around the lake. You go down 10 miles, you take the Bemis Point Ferry, which was really, really cool, to the other side of the lake, and then you ride back up, which makes your 20 mile circle, your lap. The 40 mile ride is going around the entire lake, plus um, a little, a few more miles down into Jamestown, back up and around to the starting point. The 60 mile ride, I don't even know y'all. I don't know where they went. I know it included part of the lake, but to be honest, yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> so the area of Chautauqua Lake, it's hilly. I won't say mountainous, although it definitely felt mountainous to me, but there are a lot of hills and where I live is relatively flat. We have some inclines here and there. Most of them are like overpasses that you have to ride over, but we primarily have a flat surface. So the first thing that I noticed is when we leave the Fondo, like the race begins and they start the 60 milers first, then they wait a couple of minutes and then they start the 40 milers. Then they wait a couple of minutes and then they start the 20 milers. Now I'm riding this ride by myself. I don't have a team. I don't have, you know, there are, I'm there with other folks, but they're riding a different race. They're or ride, they're in the 40 mile bracket. So I'm really doing this on my own. I cannot believe that I'm really doing this on my own, but I'm really riding this ride by myself. And I made a couple friends and, you know, you talk to a couple folks, but once you start riding, you know, you, you're in your own kind of rhythm. And so sometimes you see some folks, you know, sometimes you don't, but most of that 20 miles was completely by myself. It was, I, I won't say lonely. I would have loved to have rode with other people. Cause I think riding with people kind of pushes you and, and helps you, you know, along when you are in some not so great places, but it was a very difficult ride. Yes, there were lots of inclines. I mean, like straight out the gate, you guys, we pull out of the park and the, the first street is the incline. I'm like, really? This is how we're starting the ride? But fine. No problem. I can make it. It's not like I'm not going to be able to make this first incline. We turn the corner, still incline. I really feel like most of the ride was inclined. My thighs were killing me, but that's okay because I made it. One of the- If you've been thinking about starting a podcast and you want to include interviews with people across town, Riverside.fm offers unbelievable high quality recordings, regardless of your or your guest internet quality. And it also gives you separate audio and video tracks for each person speaking. And unlike Zoom, you don't have to install anything on your computer and your guests don't either. Head over to Riverside.fm and use promo code JazzyCast to get 60 free minutes of recording and 15% off a membership plan. The thing that I learned, though, was there is a difference between going out and doing something and you happen to reach a goal or you happen to reach a milestone and actually setting out to reach a certain goal or milestone. So this 20 miles, I've ridden 20 miles. I can do 20 miles with my eyes closed. Like 20 miles is nothing. Again, 20 miles where I live is nothing. 20 miles in the midst of these hills and valleys, something totally, totally different. But when I leave my house to ride, or if I'm riding with you know a group of people, we don't have a set amount of miles. We just ride. And if we happen to do 15, great. If we do 20, great. We do 23, cool beans, right? There's no set amount of miles. And so being on the ride, you know, there were, I'll say a good three times. I don't want to over-exaggerate. So I would tell you 12, but three times that I really wanted to quit, that I looked for the race vehicle and didn't see it. I was just done. And to not be able to quit when I wanted to really was upsetting, to to put it mildly. Um, I wasn't hurt, although I did um, kind of fall on one of my times that I decided to quit. And I was in a lot of pain. 
Um, I didn't fall to the ground, but I did fall on my bar. Um, and the bar is brutal. It's not just brutal for men. It's brutal for women as well. Uh, and I, I didn't think I'd be able to continue to ride. So I had to walk for a little bit just because I couldn't sit. I couldn't, I couldn't ride my bike. But even in that time that I was walking, the race truck or race, you know, vehicle was not, you know, there were nowhere to be found, but not in a bad way. They were still on the road, but they were on the road behind the last of those that were riding in the the 20 miles. And so there's an emergency number you could call, you know, if you needed a pickup. I didn't call it because, you know, it wasn't like life or death and I didn't want to take resources away from other people. But listen, if the van guy happened to be driving by, then I'm, I'm, I'm ready to, you know, throw in a towel. I'm done. But because the van guy never drove by and I didn't see a way to leave the race except to keep riding in it, uh, I, I had to keep pushing. I had to keep pushing. I didn't have another option. I could decide to just sit there on the side of the road and wait for, I can't even say help to arrive because I didn't need help. I just didn't want to ride anymore. Or I could keep riding. Those are really my two options. There's some other things in there, you know. But uh, out of healthy options, those are it. I can sit on the side of the road and call for a pickup or I could keep riding. And so when you set out to do a thing, like I set out to ride this 20 miles, I knew it was something I could do. And setting out to actually ride those 20 miles, my mindset was different. I had a goal. I had a very specific goal. And it wasn't to finish in a certain amount of time. It was just to finish the race, to finish the ride, to leave out and to come back on my own out in the middle of absolutely nowhere. I mean, nowhere to me, but definitely somewhere to the people that live there, right? But it was a truly a challenge. And it's a challenge I would not have been able to embark on had I not gone to Mexico, And so I'm sharing this Grand Fondo experience with you because we're faced with decisions sometimes. And, well, we're always faced with decisions, right? But there's some tough ones out there. And you can decide to either throw in the towel or keep pushing, keep moving forward. Again, I'm not talking about mental illness here. I'm not talking about putting undue pressure on yourself or hurting yourself, putting yourself in a position to to be in pain, Right. I'm talking about setting goals and setting some difficult goals that may not be pleasant, but reaching them regardless, sticking with it. I actually had to sing to myself from the uh, movie Finding Nemo, Just Keep Swimming. So I, I have like Dory's voice in my head and keeping myself just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Because I knew that if I kept pedaling, I would make it to the end of the ride. So I encourage you, as you are um, processing life right now, many of you have children um, preparing to go back to school, what that looks like for you, the stress that it it involves, um, and and how you can mm, process this new phase of life. Just keep swimming. Just take it one step at a time. You don't have to have it all figured out. But having that goal in place helps you with that next step. I don't know why. You know, I I, I really don't. Because had I voluntarily just said, I'm going to go ride around Chautauqua and took the same route, I probably would have only gone a mile or two. All honesty. Because there was... So- so many inclines in that short period of time that there's no way I would have said, and this is me knowing myself, right? I know me. There's no way I would have said, let me keep going. But because I had the goal in mind, because I was a part of something larger than myself, I was able to use that as motivation to take the next step, to keep pushing, to keep pedaling. So I encourage you not just to be the light, in this next week, but to look at your goals, look at what you have set out before you and to keep pushing, keep going one step at a time. It doesn't have to be, uh, you don't have to win, right? There, there was no, no winning outside of me personally winning this race, like it, me personally crossing the finish line that was winning. So for you, it, it's the same. You're not 
going up against anyone. You're not comparing your life to anybody else's life. You're not out here, you know, trying to keep up with the Joneses. This is about you doing what's best for you and you setting personal goals that will better you. Again, not talking mental illness. I'm not talking about hurting or placing yourself in harm's way. I'm talking about making a conscious decision and an effort to set goals and to to meet those goals one step at a time. So I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to know how you are setting your goals. What goals are you setting? And what challenges have you come up against? You know, not everyone is riding a fondo. Again, I'm going to go look up what that means. Um, not everyone is riding a, a, in, in, in a bike race. No one is, is running. Not everyone is running a, uh, a 5K or, or half marathon. But we do have goals. It could be, I'm going to take a shower every day. It could be, I'm going to mow the lawn and, you know, take care of, of the garden. It could be, I'm going to wash dishes or go back to school or finish a project on time. There are so many different goals that we have just in bettering ourselves in our lives. Maybe it's read a book or I haven't read a book cover to cover in a very long time. So maybe you were like that too. You start a book and, and you want to finish it, but maybe you don't. Set that as a goal. And then take your steps one by one, chop away at it little by little until you reach your goal. So until the next time, please, I encourage you to be the light. And as always, if you're experiencing a medical emergency, please dial 911 or go to your nearest emergency room. If you're in need of someone to talk to, you can dial 1-800-273-TALK. That is the National Crisis Prevention Helpline. And if you aren't able to talk to someone, but you still um, need to be in touch with someone, you can text. Then you can text 741741. That's the number that you're going to text. And you're going to type the word home to that number. Now, both the Crisis Prevention Helpline and the Crisis Text Line are manned by crisis counselors. And they are confidential and open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you're looking for resources, dial 211 or look up 211 on your phone to get the resources you may need. Until the next time, um, yes, don't forget, I have a sleep expert coming and we will also be bringing back our mental health mom, Vicki and Chef Alexa. I am so excited to have so many amazing people that are living their own front seat life and are willing to share their lives with us here. So I've said this for the third time now, guys. Until the next time, be the light. <laughs>